Hello. And then I actually said to you, didn't I? I said, you know, why haven't we got our will? Why haven't we paid our mortgage off? Why haven't we got anything in place that's going to be... I think the most important thing was, Liz, is that what stuck out to me on that conversation was like, I don't know how to... Hello. Daddy, I love you. Mother thanks you. Right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Hello and welcome to the It's a Drama podcast. I'm Liz. And I'm Brian. And we're back this week with some more about the grief journey, but I'm here to share a story with you. I've had a breakthrough, uh, something really po- something really negative and really positive happened. And I'm here to share both stories in an attempt to bring you comfort if you're going through a similar thing in your life as I am right now. Oh, are you awake? No, I'm awake. I'm you look, you just, look miles away then. What no, are you thinking? What are you going to have for your lunch? Well, I am thinking me uh, cottage pies in the oven. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Um, every week I say this for the last few weeks, I've said it. Oh, you know, this will be the last one we talk about, about our grief journey. Next week, we'll get back to something, some kind of normality and, you know, upbeatness. And here's the thing. Last week, we recorded a podcast about us going to Thailand and we recorded it on the Friday, on the Friday day. We sat down, we recorded this podcast. It was really upbeat. We'd just come back from Hamilton. We, I was feeling really strong and, and just full of energy. And we sat down and we recorded this podcast, didn't we, about Thailand? Yeah, we did. Yeah. And it was brilliant, wasn't it? It was really, we, we finished it and we were like, oh, just feels like, you know, we're just back to our normal selves, doesn't it? Like, yeah. it's magic. It's it's, it's I, all good. I think you, the bit of the backstory on that was Liz didn't really want to go to Thailand. And it's just what how we felt after doing the podcast or even halfway through the podcast. You were like, oh, well, we'll leave that for the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So we promise that we're going to talk to you. We're going to we are going to release that podcast about Thailand to you um, probably next week. But after we'd released, after we'd recorded that podcast on Friday and I was all like, yeah, this is great. Um, actually, I should just say, if you're new to the podcast, my mum passed from, she died of cancer two months ago now. And every week we've been coming on the podcast um, and talking about that grief journey mm-hmm. and how, how it has been in an attempt to help you if you're going on a similar, on a similar journey too. Yeah, it's one of those things that uh, we... We, do, we, we we wanted to, when we do our podcast, we, we, we talk about things sometimes that we wouldn't normally talk about. And I think it's been a great way to document of what has happened from after your mum passing to where you are now and in the distance and the time it's taken to get to where you are. Yeah. And that's what that sharing is. If it helps one person out there, that's do, doing it. And we know it's helping. So I think that's why we want to keep this going at the moment. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And and this is why we're just, we've kind of hijacked our own podcast because this wasn't in the queue. This wasn't supposed to be going out this week. You were supposed yep. to be hearing something funny and jolly and telling you about Thailand and, and all the rest of it. But no, you've got to hear this because this is a breakthrough and there's no way I'm not going to share this with you because this helped me so much and it just lifted the, a little bit of light onto what has been a very, very, very dark couple of months. And I thought, no, it's all very well sharing all the grief stuff and all the down stuff and the sad stuff, but you've got to, you've got to share. It's your duty to share something that can help someone. So this is what yeah, we're going to do. Exactly. So going back to that story, we'd released that we, we recorded the, the podcast on the Friday I went to bed on Friday night thinking, I just, I felt fine. I was absolutely fine. And that night I just had the worst nightmares that you can imagine. It was just, it was just awful. I woke up, I felt it, you know, there's nights you just feel like you've had about one minute sleep because your mind is just constantly either dreaming or awake, dreaming or awake. And it's just no sleep, no, no restful sleep. Anyway, so I woke up in the middle of the night. Well, I hadn't had any sleep, crying my eyes out, heart racing. And I dreamt that Brian had died. And I lay there in bed and I worked myself up into such, oh, I can't describe how how bad it was. It, I was literally just laying there. My heart was going, you know, tears just pouring down my face. Just, I was convinced 
at three o'clock in the morning, just laying there that you were going to die. Everyone, I was going to die. You know, everyone around me, everything was going to collapse. We'd lose the house. We'd go to Thailand and probably, you know, whatever got, it is. Yeah. We've gotten um, probably die. Everything, Brian, yep. everything was just so horrible. It was so frightening and so negative and so, yeah, just frightening. And you know what it's like, you know, when you lay there at night and then it's real, it's real. And it's, it's all very well people saying to you, oh, these are just thoughts that you're having and you've got to, but it's real to you. It feels so real. And the next morning I got up and literally my eyes were just down here. I just, I just felt like, you know, like two, what do they say when you two pieces of coal in the snow or whatever, where you there is a I wouldn't one. say piss holes in the snow. Yeah, that's it. No. That's the one. <laughs> Two piss holes in the snow. Hadn't had any sleep. Just felt really rough. And I felt really sorry for you because uh, I know at the moment, every day you make us a coffee, we go outside, we do our grounding, we look at the sun, we stand on the deck and Brian always says to me, how did you sleep last night? And I always want to say to you, oh, I slept really well last night. And like I, a top. Yeah. What and does I, that mean? Like a top? I don't know, yeah. but I didn't sleep like a top. And I just said, I broke down crying to Bri and I just said, oh, it's just been awful. Like, you know, I dreamt this. And then I actually said to you, didn't I? I said, you know, why haven't we got our will? Why haven't we paid our mortgage off? Why haven't we got anything in place that's going to be? I think the most important thing was Liz, is that what stuck out to me on that conversation was like, I don't know how to edit. <laughs> yeah, but you're laughing now, but it's <laughs> I not know, funny. I know at the time, I'm like, Okay. <laughs> no, but you know what that was? Because I no, told because myself, yeah. It's real. That's what you think, isn't it? It's just all the, the things. I can't go forward. If you go, I, you know, the business is gone, all that sort of stuff, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely everything. Bri, yeah. I don't even know whether, I, 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 are we insured? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know that. State insurance. Yeah. So, and I don't know how to work the TV remote. Yeah. I don't know how to edit a video. Well, I wouldn't do a podcast on my own. I'd just be sat here on my own. So that's... That's all that Just gone to be down empty the drain. Chair and empty tables. Yes. <laughs> and I'm laughing now, but I tell you I what, know, but that's I what, wasn't there. That's the way you get through things, isn't it? You know, is is, is about having a bit of a laugh. It is. It is yeah. how you get through because things. it makes you laugh afterwards. But at the time, it's deadly serious. It isn't is, it? Brian. You know? But and that's that, how you make a laugh of it. That's that's what comedy is. And that's what I was saying to him. I was saying, yeah. I don't know how to edit. I don't know even how to. T- what, what's the passcode to the banking? I don't know where. What, where does our money get paid into? I don't. And that sounds really pathetic. But I just leave it all to you. Yeah, but you you do know all the stuff is you just at the time you can't think straight so and you just think oh I don't I, I haven't got that app I haven't got this app and it's like well yeah you yeah you, and then yeah. I started thinking okay so and I had this scenario in my head going okay well now all right you haven't got a job you won't be able to renovate the house because you don't even know how to turn the heating <laughs> yeah. on and it just started I'm laughing but I wasn't then I it just started crumbling around me the whole everything was just going to rap basically yeah. and perceptions ruling the day yeah but that, it was that's, so frightening that's what they say is when you're in that fear mode is you can't make a decision because the, the decision you make isn't based on rational thoughts or anything else it's it's uh, you're like oh it's panic panic yeah. panic and it's yeah. just like whoa and that that's what's frightening is you start to then can't think straight because of what is going on. Yeah. Yeah. No, so the, the first thing that I wanted, that was the first thing I wanted to share. And the reason I wanted to share that, not just because it was a story in my experience. And do you know why I wanted to share it with you? Because when I went to counselling, um, and I love to go into do my counselling, I've talked about it before, but it just, for, for different reasons, I just came home and luckily, thankfully, I have Brian to talk to and I've, you know, I've got... And I know that you're not a professional counsellor, but anyway, I just wish that someone had said to me at the beginning of this journey, I wish a counsellor had said to me, because I saw two counsellors and I don't know if this is a counsellor's job to say this, I'm not sure, but I'm telling you so that you know that I wish someone had said to me, listen, Liz, you've just had your mum snatched away from you. This time, six months ago, she was sending you photographs from the hairdressers going, oh, look how lovely my hair looks. And now she's not here. She's gone. It's going to be very normal for you to start thinking about your own death and people around you dying because all of a sudden you suddenly realise, oh my God, I'm not, I'm not indestructible. You didn't didn't plan for this. You didn't plan for that. Because I was saying to you, you know, you think, oh, well, we'll see your mum 
in a couple of days and we'll sort that out and we'll, you know, we'll get that in, put in place and this, and that day never comes, does no, it? No, you know? no. Gotta and you go through and life, then. don't you? You go through life, even now. I know mm-hmm. that one day you're going to die, but I don't want to think about that. You go through life thinking, no, no, no I'm not going to think about that. And you don't think about your parents dying yeah. or someone you love close to you dying. You just don't want to think about it. And this isn't uh, me saying, oh, guess what? You know, it does. Ha- this is me just saying that particular thing when you wake up in the middle of the night thinking everyone is going to die and you're going to die. It's normal. Mm-hmm. It's normal. It's a normal part of grief. That's all. That's what I want to say about it. And that, that, that's the truth, because the last thing you ever want to think about is the afterlife of what, what, what have you put in place? Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Before we move on to the second thing that I wanted to talk to you about, the second part of this story, the breakthrough that I had, I just want to share a little something with you. Hello, you. I just want to interrupt this podcast to have a quiet moment with you by myself to share something that I've been working on, something heartfelt and personal. If you've been with us for a while, you'll know that the last few months have been a very difficult time for me. I felt very sad. I felt days that I didn't want to bring my head from underneath the pillow. I felt lonely and confused and dark and small. And worst of all, I thought it was never, ever going to end. But slowly, it began to feel a little bit easier. As time went by, I began to make little self-discoveries. I also implemented suggestions that people had made to me that would make my days lighter. And every day I wrote those suggestions and those findings and those little bits of inspiration into a form of letters. And I added my little touch of humour to them. And today I want to share those letters with you. I want to share with you what helped me so that if ever or if you are going through the similar things, then you know that you're not alone and there is light at the end of the tunnel. To get these five letters that I wrote for myself that want to share with you, you can go to www.itsadrama.com forward slash letters. Every day for five days, I'll send you one of those personal letters and you will feel hope and inspired and you will laugh hopefully and you will feel lighter, I promise. But there is one small thing that I ask of you, that when you receive those letters, you have to imagine that me and you are sitting on your couch together and we're sitting shoulder to shoulder and we're just looking at each other and saying, we've got each other, we've got this, we can do it, we can get through because do you know what? We can. So come on then, what are you waiting for? Sign up for those letters, www.itsadrama.com forward slash letters and let me get down on that couch with you because my legs are killing me standing up. Okay, let's get back to the show. Okay, so the second part of this journey that I just had to get this camera out and like I say, just think, no, the Thailand video can wait. I just want to talk about this. Mm was that same day. So we had the day I was feeling really tired. I was really upset, really cranky, really just very, very sensitive. Brian was making dinner and um, we'd had a good talk, hadn't we? What are you laughing at? (laughs) Again. (laughs) We'd had a good talk. Oh, Brian, you're so wonderful. No, No, you are. You're You're so wonderful. Yeah, but you're getting back into things where you're, you know, we're we're sharing the load again a little bit more. So, Well, the way I look at it, Brian, is I've I've made the dinner for 30 years. Mm, I might not know where the TV remote is, but I know how to make a good dinner. Yeah, that's all right. I've made Christmas dinner now, so we can just put it in the freezer. (laughs) Um, Anyway, the day had gone on and it'd been a day of talking and reflecting. We went out for a long walk and I just thought, okay, yep, I'm, I'm fine. Brian was making dinner and I just went into the bedroom and I walked into my bedroom and in my bedroom, I've put this big table. We've got, I've got this beautiful antique table that I brought with us from England and it didn't used to have anything on it apart from a couple of plants. And since mum passed, I've made that table into a kind of, I don't want to say shrine because that sounds a little bit. A it's little, not quite a shrine. No, it's it? not a shrine. But what I've done is I've put photos of mum there. I've put my Kiakaha, um stone there. I've put my my book there, my flowers. I've got lavender there, a candle. And, you know, just like lots of beautiful things that when I look at that table, it just comforts me. So I just wanted to set the scene. So I walked into my bedroom and opened the door. And the first thing I saw on the table was the picture of my mum. And I went like this. I went, (gasps) and I just, 
I was about to burst out crying again. I was just about to let it all out. I've seen the picture of mum. Cue the crying. Cue the heartache. Cue the emotional outburst. And I just wanted to, for for years now, I have I have studied anything to do with the mind that makes you more positive. So meditation, um, you know, uh, mindfulness, all things like that, that, that move you forward in your mind and create a positivity around you. I am enthralled by that stuff. I love it. And I've been, like I say, I've been reading about it for years and years. And I don't know if that's what helped. I'm guessing it did. But I was able in a split second to say to myself, freeze, freeze, Liz. That sounds really, really weird. It sounds freaky. Yeah. I know it does. But it does. It's been in the present moment, just realising that these other things aren't washing through you. Yeah. You know? I walked into the room and I went, <gasps> and then I just said to myself, freeze, as if I was in like a show. And I just, I didn't actually go like this and freeze, yeah. <laughs> but I froze inside me. And then my voice inside me said, describe how this feels physically, not, not mentally, not like, oh, I miss my mum and I just wish my mum was back and I'm so sad. Just describe to me, I said to myself, describe to me how this feels physically. Yep. And I stood there and like in, this, in, a, in a few seconds, I said to myself, it feels like a ball of hot, boiling, bubbling water, even lava, like, you know, just bubbling hot. It's like a big ball and it's right in my chest and it's moving up through my throat and over my chin and into my nose and into my eyes. And it just wants to explode out of my eyes. In fact, if I had holes all over my body from my chest to my eyes, yeah. it would just spew out of my eyes. It's that hot and it's that burning and it's that heavy and it wants to just go. It just wants to explode. And that's what I said to myself in that, in that few seconds that I was talking. And it was almost like going, oh, okay, so what are you going to do with it then? Are you going to let it go? Mm. And I didn't. And I imagined myself with my hands like this, if you're watching on the video, just my hands around this hot ball of sadness and grief and anger and all the things that I was thinking for that split second, I held it. And I said, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to let it go? And all of a sudden I thought, what did I come into this room for? Yeah. Oh yeah, I came to get my lavender oil to put in my burner. And I walked around the room, I walked around the bed, picked up the lavender oil and it went. Yeah. It went spry. Well, that's that's a very good analogy of saying, you know, you let about letting go. So did you let it go or did you actually put it back in? Do you know what I did, I think? Well, and, and first of all, I need to tell you something. I really, 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 really need to make this clear. Yeah. This is not me saying, oh, I've discovered a way that you can just oh, no. pop it's grief just... to the back of the shelf there and just like, you know, keep a lid on it. That's not what this no. is about. I swear that's not what this is about. No, you wouldn't be sort of telling, saying otherwise because just one one thing, it's just, it's being aware of something that you've, you've discovered in yourself. Yeah, yeah, it is being aware of something I've discovered. But... And this is me thinking... Do you know what it was when you say, what, 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 what was your question? What did you... Uh, so, so what did you, you know, that was a good analogy of saying about letting go because you kept saying to yourself, do I hold it or do I let it go? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, some people would say, well, I just put it into a compartment and shut the door. Or did you just let it go? I gave myself the choice of putting it back where it came from, which was back inside. Yeah. Let's just pop that there for a minute. In a minute, if you want to, you can let it go. But yeah. we're just going to pop that there for a minute. And we're just going to remember why we came into this room. And that's what it felt like. It felt like, mm. oh yeah, you came in to get the lavender. And I can't explain to you the joy it gave me just for one split moment. I mean, bearing in mind, I spend the rest of the day crying and laying in bed crying and well, you don't, thinking, but no, but I'm saying yeah. this isn't per this isn't me being like, oh my, oh, look at me. You know, yeah. I've discovered I've that sorted it. I've sorted it. This was one little glimmer of hope and light that said to me, do you know what, Liz? You have got a choice. You've mm -hmm. got a choice here. You can, you can, and that, that's what felt good. That's what felt empowering. Yeah. 
because for nine weeks, I haven't been in control of anything. I feel like I feel like I haven't been in control control of my emotions, my dreams, my my tears, my my words. You know, just I say things and it just comes out of my head in front of the kids, and I'm like, oh my god, that's not like me. I'm not controlling myself. I just haven't felt in control at all, and I'm sure that's normal because you've just lost your mum. But this split second was empowering but it was it. Yep. you were in control you were you got to choose mm-hmm. you got to choose this time and that was just from saying describe how this feels yep. describe this feeling and that's it that is yep. that is it that's what i wanted to share because it felt so good it felt so good to just be the one that goes no hang on a minute no, not this time. Yeah. Not this time. Yeah, because it, it's, you know, we talked about that, um, you know, when we were talking about doing this, uh, we were talking about doing the podcast, so we talked about it last night, that's what I was trying to say. Um, and I've lost my train of thought now. It, it, it's that feeling of, feeling. it feels good to cry, because when you do cry, you know, it's like, oh, this feels right. I should be doing this yeah. right now. This feels right yeah. for the, the occasion or whatever it is, a sad film or a grief or whatever it is. And there's times when you just think, oh, actually, I don't need to cry because I, it's that's how I feel. I'm just saying this is personally to me. I'm not saying everyone shouldn't cry, but it just gets to the point with me where I go, well, yeah, what, what you described is I can feel it coming on. And do you know what? I was just going to think about something else. I'll turn away from the screen because yeah. I don't want to go there right now. I just want to stay quite focused on what, on what I'm doing mm. because it, it leads to a root when you let it out and let it cry. I'm not saying it's not good to cry, but it's, it's when do you stop? Why, or why do you stop crying? Mm. You know, how, how long is it? A minute, two minutes, three minutes, an hour, two days. How, so why, so what makes you stop in the end? I'm a big advocate for crying. Anyone who's watched this show will know that I cry Mm. at the drop of a hat. But there's a difference between crying um, because you want to express something. And, you know, like sometimes I look at mum's picture, I want to cry. It makes me feel good to cry. You know, I look at my pictures, I read her letters, I cry because I want to cry. But what isn't a nice feeling is when you're crying automatically. You're not Mm. in control of that crying. Mm. You don't get to choose. It's just like, look at your mum's picture, cry. Talk about your mum, cry. Go to the supermarket, meet someone, talk to your mum, talk about your mum, cry. Mm. Do that, cry. It's just, it's exhausting. Anyone who's been through this or is going through this will know it is exhausting. Mm. And so if this tiny little thing can help you, even if you only manage to do it like for one flicker of a second or whatever it is, if that can help you, it just reminds you that there is light. There is light. And like I say, this isn't about pushing it away. It isn't about get over it quick. This is just about reminding you of the strength that you have, that your mum gave you, the strength that you have inside to move forward with this. And if I've shared anything today, I just hope that that is the message that you take away. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Please remember our hearts beat with yours always. I love you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and I will speak to you soon. Yep. So kia kaha, stay strong, stay in the moment, the present moment, and hopefully you'll be safe in that present moment. So um, kia u, stay true and as true to yourself. So see you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for being with us today. Don't forget, before you click off, go and get your free five days worth of letters. Those letters that I wrote to myself about the things that have really been helping me on this journey and will help you too. Go over to www.itsadrama.com forward slash letters and I'll send you those free letters every day for five days. I can't wait to chat with you personally. Speak to you soon. Bye. come no one tells you that how come no one says to you right listen just be just be prepared when your mum dies or your dad dies or someone close to you passes away you're going to keep thinking about death you're going to keep thinking what what about when it happens to me and 
just no one tells you about that. And because I don't know about it, because I'm ignorant to it, because my mum didn't tell me about it, yeah. I'm thinking this isn't normal. I'm depressed. 